Which brings us to, and this always branches out in this discussion, of geopolitical issues. Uh, you know, China, who knows whether the figures are real or not, who knows in the command economy what a bubble that might be. You have the Ukrainian-Russian situation, sort of Putin stretches his, 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 his arms a bit. Uh, what's your sense of the geopolitical issues and perhaps market-related risks, James? Well, geopolitical issues are always with us. They're a constant. There's never been a year you've gone into without a major geopolitical issue of, of some sort. Now, if you, if you look at, I mean, every, every... Well, you don't have Trump to beat around anymore. Yeah, but you might have that next. You might, you know, 2024 elections. It might well be people are looking forward to, to uh, you know, what's going to happen there again. So that that will be an issue in, in 12, 24 months' time. But you know, so right now, I mean, everyone's an expert on social media about the the, the weather conditions on the the Russian-Ukraine border because you need frozen ground for. Putin's tanks and so on. I'm not, you know, yes, it, cl clearly, I mean, that, that would seem to so me... So what do you think is the biggest I think Russia, geopolitical Ukraine. I, think, I think Russia, Ukraine. I mean, the, the Polish... But surely but, that's a localised uh, spat. Um, well, it's it could, be, it could, be, it could be a very big localised spat. Um, and, and it could well, draw, what what and are the implications wider. for markets if that got worse? Because um, I don't see NATO intervening against Russia. No, I th well, it would be gas prices, really. European gas prices is where you'd see the most... Um, the most volatility, as it's so reliant on, on Russia. Uh, for me, the, the biggest geopolitical risk is China and its property slowdown, uh, which is undergoing. People were, were speculating... At, at is the, that a construction slowdown? It's everything, yeah. It, they, they are even, people were saying they're having their Lehman moment. They're actually having their Anglo-Irish moment. The parallels between what's happening in China and what happened here are incredible, where you have a... Sorry, a, I missed the Anglo-Irish moment. What was no, <laughs> no, but a, a, domestic, a domestic economy over-reliant on property that's been fueled by domestic leverage amongst banks, okay. amongst lenders, and that's all now unravelling um, in China, deliberately, as they had... A well, how bad could that get? For China, um, it, it depends on how bad the authorities let it get. At the moment, it's probably far worse than people that would have thought six months ago. There's been a change in, in Chinese policy that talked about common prosperity from now on. They no longer want fake growth. So for 20 years, when, as you said, the GDP stats dropped, they just built something, anything, it didn't matter. They, they, that policy changed last summer, and now they're trying to deleverage the property developers. They're trying to deleverage the banks, and you're seeing that already slowing um, in the construction sector, in property sales. Um, you're seeing a lot of bonds uh, default, okay. etc. So, as a, just as the biggest global risk, we think it, it's the 